Hi, it's Rob Shapiro from Technique Peak. Today we're going to look at the ability of the clavicle to posterior rotate. We don't always think of that when we look at our joint mobility, but it's very important, especially in people who get their end range. If they can't get the end range and you've already cleared up the clavicular joint, we need to look at SC, AC, first rib, second rib. So as far as for the clavicle, it has to rotate posteriorly. So the way we start the technique is we come on, we grab onto the scapula, and you want to grab it, and you want to pull it down and back. Then you're going to come around to here, and you'll see on the front, here's just here's the clavicle. I want to make this clavicle, I want to feel, can it rotate posteriorly? So I could grab it, which is not the most comfortable, but I have this maintained. I could try to move it into a posterior rotation. Okay, so I'm trying to go around that. The other option is to come in and use the phenar or hyperlithinar eminence of your hand. Keep that in that position. Go there, and then the rotation is around in a circle. So you can see I'm not just pushing in an AP direction, I'm actually going around it to make keep it to do a posterior rotation of the clavicle while I maintain the scapula on its in its down and back. There, pick up the slack. So as a technique, it can it could be a technique in itself. Before you do that, you might look into I'm not the most comfortable, sorry, Tyler, is you can come in and look at subclavius, which gets very tight, pulls it down. Right. So next time you have a patient who doesn't get full range of motion, you want to make sure you check the clavicle, posterior glide, or posterior rotation, or glide. Rob Shapiro from Technique Peach.